Give you your first hand experience playing with Cheslin in Toulouse, and obviously you must have spoken about the Lions. How does how would he feel about the box? They haven't played since the World Cup final mm. in 2019, so they're going to have to play a test match now, a year and a half on, mm. um, in the hope of winning a Lions series. Like, do you think those lads are are under pressure, or do you think that'll kind of galvanise them? I think it'll galvanise them. Uh, from what I've heard, they've still been in contact as a squad, uh, probably having the odd Zoom session here and there, but I, I have no doubt that the, the Springboks, once they put that green green and gold jersey on, they'll, uh, they'll front up. And um, I think uh, a lot of the frustration being held back uh, from being in that team environment, I think it'll galvanise them. And um, no, it'll be a good, good uh, series once it gets underway. That's my biggest worry. <laughs> it's my biggest worry. I think the Lions got an amazing squad, but the fact the box haven't played together, I think you're right there. Box at home, it will it will galvanise them. It's, if anything, it's a bigger challenge for the Lions this year than it would have been in 09 or, or 97 because, you know, with the, with the cards stacked against you, often teams come out swinging. So mm. it's a fascinating, fascinating kind of dilemma for the box but it's going to be an awesome series John who do you think is going to be victorious can I say you can no I don't know I think um, I think it'll be close but um, yeah um, I'm I'm not going to say who's going to be victorious I I wouldn't have a clue because both sides are quite uh, I'm going to sit on the fence here and uh, be a neutral you're going to sit back and enjoy (laughs) it Um, that's what you're going to do but I suppose going back to 2005 you played against the Lions for Auckland so what are your memories of that tour well that was um, a while ago a long way yeah I I remember I played for Auckland coming off the bench against the Lions and um, uh, it was like playing for the All Blacks when you when we're in the Auckland uh, hotel room all the Lions the Bami Army were outside uh, singing their songs but um, the good thing about it was when we came out Everyone was cheering for us, uh, just walking to the bus, which is, uh, for a 19-year-old, um, it, was, it was quite a special thing to experience. But um, one of the most special things that I got to, uh, I've still got Martin Corey's, uh, Martin Corey's jersey uh, from that game, and it was quite special for me. I really wanted to, I made it a goal to make the All Blacks for that series, but I uh, wasn't able to, wasn't good enough, but... Um, to, to be able to experience that and, and play against the Lions, that was, that was awesome. Well, then 12 years later, you were selected and you played in each of the test matches against the Lions. Um, now, I know it was a bit of a disappointing series for the All Blacks and for yourself personally. So I'm going to go there and I know bad things coming through, I guess. So what was it? You were subbed off in the first test after 45 minutes, subbed off in the second after half an hour, and then you got a yellow in the third. Apart from yeah. the stuff that I've just dredged up, what else are your memories from that tour? I was quite. Um, I look at their test with some fond memories. Like it was, uh, it was just special to be in the black jersey playing against the Lions uh, with the history that uh, both sides have had, regardless of the results and what, like the yellow card and also going off in the second test. I was, I was just proud that um, I was able to be part of that history. It would have been. It was a bit of a hollow feeling at the end when they just called it a draw. I would have loved the extra time and just get a de- definitive, uh, definitive uh, winner. But uh, I, I think they had pre, pre made that decision. But um, yeah, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that series. But yeah, the last impression that I had, I would have loved to play extra time and, and get a get a winner. Yeah, I think we all thought, thought the same, mate. I was watching yeah. in a bar in Ibiza. And I, was, <laughs> I was watching just thinking, no, it's a draw. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It was uh, one of the most awkward trophy photos you'd ever uh, had. Just yeah. both teams together just going, what are we doing? It was, yeah, a, it was yeah. such a strange one. Like, I remember coming away because I was obviously just watching it. And you f- I felt so empty inside. Yeah. It just was really weird. It's yeah. not how you pictured it going at all. But yeah. I know now you did have a brilliant battle against Sean O'Brien in the third test. It was the two of the best flankers finally put it against each other. You floored him, didn't you? Oh, I just flew in into a clean out. And I think uh, Shorty was in an awkward position. And um, I just got him on a sweet spot on his shoulder. And um, I have felt that sweet spot a few times yeah. about. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad for him. I, um, I went and saw him after the game and he, he was in a sling. And I, yeah, it was... Just, 
for a good lad, um, it, you know, I felt bad from. I was going to say, did it finally feel good to get one up on him? Because you guys were constantly like pitted against each other as the, the best flankers in the world. And then you kind of got one up on him. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he, he's had a few shots on me um, every time we play in Dublin. So I had to get back one, uh, get one back on him. Oh, poor Shawnee. Yeah. But like, can you even, can you talk to us a little bit more in detail about maybe what went so wrong for the All Blacks on that series? Because it mainly down to, do you think that it was the, the you know, you guys were a little bit unlucky with the refereeing calls or? No, I think, um, I thought the first test was quite close and um, I thought both teams were, um, went at it, but we were lucky to get that win. But uh, I think the second test was quite uh it was quite pivotal in terms of confidence of both sides and uh, us being 14, 14 men, uh, uh, one man down for the most of the game. And then I think the Lions really found their groove in their game and started playing their rugby, and which gave them a lot of confidence heading into the third test. So, um, yeah, the third test uh, could have gone either way. Um, I don't think any of the refereeing decisions would have made a difference. It was just... Uh, those kind of games, uh, the the similar to finals, you the fine margins. You only have a few opportunities to to capitalise on, and I don't think we, our All Black team, we, I don't think we were sharp enough on that day to to capitalise on the opportunities that we did get. Jamie, actually, just on that, because obviously you've played for the Lions, so when it comes to the test, does every test you play for the Lions actually feel like a final in a sense? Is it you know how? Yeah, they, they're huge games. They're huge games because they only happen every four years. So. You know, you have three test matches every four years to play for the Lions. If you play in it, great. If you don't, chance gone. You have to wait four years. And, you know, for the Lions, you only have um, one tour every four years. You have to remember, for the host country players, their whole career might pass without the chance of coming to play against the Lions. Jerome has been lucky to, to play against the Lions twice, uh, 12 years apart. But some players never get that chance in their career. So there's a huge, huge kind of honour and special thing for those home players to play against the Lions. They realise that it's, you know, to do it once is a miracle if you do it twice, uh, as Jerome has done. So it's very special and you're well aware that chance doesn't come around often in your career and you have to grasp it with both hands. And it is like a final. It is like a final. The momentum from the first test is huge. The first test is absolutely massive. And the all backs did a job. Who Jerome has spoke, I think Sonny Bill's red card probably turned that second test on its head really um and the Lions got got ascendancy um but yeah they are like finals they're awesome they're absolutely awesome to play in and uh you know all the pressure comes on it's it's which team can hold their nerve I guess Jerome who was the toughest member of the Lions squad to play against oh uh Mara was pretty tough but I'd I'd have to say someone that just kept coming was Marco Unipola he just um, has no handbrake. He just keeps going and going. He loves to get the ball in. And to, to stand in front of him and try and put a shot on him, it's uh, impossible. He's solid. He's a brick of a man. But um, I'd say he'd probably be one of the... He'd be up there with the toughest uh, in that test that I played.